Hello, I'm Jason with CodeLearner.com. Welcome to Lesson 23 of Mastering Java. Here we're going to do something incredibly important. Uh, we've been doing and dealing with variables almost since the very first program we compiled in Java. And, um, you know, we've gotten pretty comfortable at declaring integers and doing loops and if statements and things like that. But there are a couple of things that I need to talk to you about regarding scope of variables and also the lifetime of a variable. And uh, if I skip this section or if you skip this section, then what's going to happen eventually is you're going to write a program that's going to be confusing and you're not going to know why it works. So let me try to short circuit that right now and tell you to please pay attention to this lesson because it will save you a lot of heartache in the future. First thing I want to talk about is the scope of a variable. What do I mean by that? First thing I want to do is point out to you that our main method here, which is the main body in which our program is going to run, is encapsulated between these curly braces here, these two. And later as we do more complicated programs, we're going to create our own methods that we can call and then bounce back from and, and so make more complicated programs. But for now, everything's happening inside of the main method. So when I declare an integer, let's say i, like this, I'm declaring it inside of this main method. So when I do things like this, system.out.println, got to work, bear with me here a little bit. Uh, the value of i is like this. Of course, I haven't initialized it to anything. Let's initialize it to 12. Of course, when I, what, what's going to happen here is it's going to print it out because this variable has been declared up here. It's been initialized to a value. And this uh, print statement knows the value of this variable because it's sitting right here in the same code block. So in other words, this print statement and this integer declaration are both inside of these curly braces. And so this print statement knows the value of this variable. That's what we've defined it to be. Now let me show you something else. What if I wrap this print statement inside of an if? So if i is greater than 5, then we'll go ahead and print the uh, statement here. So let me go ahead and make it clear. Let me do curly brace here. And then down here, let me go ahead and put an enter. And we'll do a closing curly brace right here. So nothing has really changed. All I've done is encapsulate this uh, inside of a, a curly brace. So everything works fine. So again, this variable i goes and bounces down to this if this evaluates to true because i is greater than five and so we go into here inside this if and we print this guy out now i need to show you and tell you when we talk about scope we're talking about here is an outer set of brackets and now we have created an inner set of brackets anytime you create a, a new code block in this case this is a code block between here and here it could be because of an if could be because of a for could be because of lots of other things like while loops and things that we're going to create later on down the road. Anytime you have another pair of curlies, you've created another um, another scope. So you can think of this outer set of brackets as the outer scope and this inner set of brackets as the inner scope. So it turns out that the way Java is designed is that when you declare variables in an outer scope like this, so this is the very first thing inside the main method, then all of the inner scopes see the value of this variable. So inside of this if statement, uh, the integer i, it can see and it knows that, that that integer exists and it sees the value of 12. So when we try to print it out, uh, there it is. But let me show you something that the reverse is not always true. Java lets you create variables pretty much anywhere you want inside of your code. So inside of this if statement, I might create another variable and I might call it integer k and I'm going to set it equal to negative 5. Right? It's perfectly valid in Java to create a variable inside of an inner code block like this, inside of an if statement like this. So what this is saying is I declare this variable, I come, this if statement is true, so I go execute this code block, and when I get in here, I create a variable and I assign the value of negative 5 to it, and then I go and I, I do this printing, and so everything is fine so far, everything's working just fine, but let me show you something interesting. If I come out here outside of this if, and I do system.out.println, and I close it off, and I go here, the value of k is k, like this. Let's see what happens. All right, I have an error. I have an error. So let me cancel that. Notice the k is highlighted. I hover over it, and it says k cannot be resolved to a variable. 
This is what I'm talking about when I talk about scope of variables. This is the kind of thing that can infuriate you when you're first learning how to program. You see that the variable is right here, but for some reason I'm not able to print it out. It doesn't understand what it is, and you start beating your head against the wall. The reason that you cannot print the variable k is because k was declared inside of this code block, right? So the way it works in Java is that all variable you can, you can think of it as a nested set of boxes. Think of a, a box, like you know you have a big box and you open it and it is an inside box and you open that as another inside box and so on. So in this case the outside box is this pair of curly braces and the inside box is this set of curly braces. So I have created a new scope inside of here. When I declare a variable inside of the scope it really only lives inside of this inner curly brace, right? Uh, and so that's why if I put it here, if I put this guy here, system out dot print ln. If I just put the variable k there, and if I want to print that variable out, let me go ahead and since I had an error, let me comment this section of the code out. Notice that whenever I hit uh, run there, the negative five is able to be printed from within the same code block that this variable was defined. But as soon as, let me go ahead and comment this out, but when I, as soon as I try to print it from outside of the area, I get an error. And that is because of the way the scoping works. So the bottom line is, to summarize, this is how it works. When variables are declared uh, inside of a scope, in this case this is the scope from these two curly braces, this variable is visible to all inner scopes. So this is an inner scope I've created here. If I had another if or another for inside of here, all of the inner scopes that are down at a lower level from the one in which I've created this guy means that variable will be visible within all scopes that are down below this level. But the reverse is not true. If I create a variable on the inside, think of the inner box of your Christmas present, then it's not visible to the outside world. It's only visible inside here or inside any other scopes I might create inside, like if I had a nested if or a nested for in here. So it's a one-way street. When I create variables up here at the top, my whole program can see them. No matter how many ifs or how many fors or how many sets of code blocks I create, everything created up here at the beginning of my main method can be visible inside any number of scopes that I create. But if I start creating variables inside of brackets, inside of curly braces that are insides of ifs and fors, then they're only going to be visible and used inside of those curly braces or in any inner scopes that I've created uh, in there. It's not going to be visible to the larger box out there. So it's it's kind of encapsulating this variable here that I've created. It's only really useful inside of this bracket uh, here. And there's one more thing I'm going to say. Not only is the thing only visible in here, not only is this variable k only visible inside of here, the way it works is when Java gets down to the if statement and it starts to execute this, the variable k is initialized to the number negative 5 and then whenever we exit the if down here, this variable k is destroyed. It's not preserved uh, for the next time we come back. Like let's say this was a for loop and we're looping over and over again. The variable is created and then when it exi exits the code block, it's destroyed. It's discarded. And then when we come, if we come back into the code block again, then it's created again and then it's destroyed. So the way variables work is they're only really activated or active whenever you're inside of that code block. So the only reason, and this makes total sense actually, because the only reason you would create a variable inside of the if statement is if you only wanted to use it locally for some reason locally for some reason. Now let me show you something else real quick here. Let me uh, take this guy out, let me save it, and let me show you something interesting. So here I've created the variable i, and here I've created the variable k. These are separate variables, and we talked about that the k is in the inner scope and the i is in the outer scope. We talked about what that means. So they're separate variables, totally separate. Now for those of you coming from different programming languages, you might think that I can in create a variable called i inside of here and it would be totally separate from the variable i that I've created out there but when I hover over it it says duplicate local variable i Java is a little different from other languages if you create a variable inside of a scope like this you can't name it something that you've already named a variable outside so it's basically forcing you to name your variables to be all different things and that's really good practice anyway if I have an I up here that I'm using and then I have another I inside it's going to lead to confusion so that's why it's done the way it is so that's what the scope of a variable is now I also want to talk about 
I think I mentioned the lifetime that the variable is only really active. It's created when we come into the code block and then it's destroyed whenever we leave the code block. Um, so let me go ahead and erase all of this stuff. And we're going to illustrate that with another, uh, another part, another little code fragment right now. So what I would like to do is create a variable here called uh, count and I'll just set it equal to one or let's set it equal to zero. It doesn't really matter. And then I want to create a for loop and I'm going to say count is equal to zero. Count is less than or equal to, let's say eight. And let's say count plus plus. That means increment the count variable. So all we've done here is we've created a loop that does it eight times and I'm going to open a curly brace, hit enter, uh, Eclipse automatically creates the closing curly for me here. So now I have a nice uh, a nice loop here. Now let's say for some reason, it just depends on your application, inside of this for loop, notice that I have created another uh, code scope here. By, by creating this loop with another pair of curly braces, I've created another scope. So inside of here, let's say that I create another integer and I call it JSON, okay? And I'm going to set it equal to 5, right? Let's say that. And then let's let's go ahead and say that I print that out. System out dot print ln, and uh, I'll just say beginning of loop JSON equals, and then I'll put plus JSON. All right. So all I'm doing really is I am looping this guy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It actually goes nine times because I'm going from zero to eight. And every time I go through here, I'm creating a variable JSON and I'm printing the value of it out. It's pretty boring so far. But don't forget, this variable JSON I've created, according to what we've learned just now, it only exists inside this for loop. If I try to access JSON outside this for loop, let's say I do JSON is equal to eight, I try to assign it something like that. It doesn't understand what JSON is. Cannot be resolved to a variable, right? Because it doesn't it doesn't exist outside the scope. It doesn't know what that is. But furthermore, it's created when it comes into the loop, and then it's destroyed when we exit the loop. When we come back around again, it's created and initialized, and then it's destroyed. And this is happening over and over again. So to show you that what this is that this is what's happening after I print the beginning of loop uh, uh, value here, let me reassign to JSON negative, you know, 25, let's say. And let me print out dot out dot print ln. Let me do end of loop JSON equals. And then I'll do a plus JSON. And then I'm just going to give myself a blank line here in between by doing backslash in. So what have I done here? I'm printing out the value of the variable when I start the loop, and then I'm reassigning it to a value of negative 25, and then I'm printing out the value of the variable at the end of the loop, and let's see what happens. So you can see that every time I loop through the beginning of the loop JSON, the value is five, but the end of the loop JSON is negative 25. But when I start the loop again, the value goes back to being five. And then whenever I end it, the value goes back to being uh, negative 25 because see even though I end the loop with a value of negative 25 when I come back around again I declare and I start over again and I reassign that value to be a 5. So I guess the point that we're trying to make here is every time we come through the loop we reinitialize the variable even though it gets overwritten at the end every time we come back in it gets overwritten again and again every time we come back through the loop. So these variables they only really exist inside their their scope or any inner scopes here and they're not visible to the outside world the other direction and they're created when we go into the scope and they're destroyed when we exit the scope. Now most of the time when you create your programs you're going to declare all of your variables at the beginning of the main method and you're going to use them but occasionally inside of a very complicated for loop or a very complicated if statement or a while loop or any of the other things we'll talk about later, you might have occasion to use a local variable inside of there and to keep your code efficient, clean, and readable, you might declare that variable. If you know you're only going to use it inside of that loop, you might declare it in there and so it's used and, and it doesn't clutter up all your other variables at the top of your code. So that's kind of why I want to make sure you understand the scope and the lifetime of these variables uh, in this lesson. Very important stuff. Make sure you understand it. It's incredibly useful uh, for you avoiding errors down the road as you program Java.